Looking for Madden 21 Ultimate Team Coins with fast delivery? IG Vault has the cheapest and most reliable coins on the market. Click the link in the description and use coupon code SPORTS for 6% off your order. Oh, what's up YouTube? It's Duke, back here from SportsGamers.com. And in today's Madden 21 tip video, I'm about to break down the most frustrating lockdown coverage defense in all of Madden 21. This defense is super easy to set up. And it really does a great job of defending the most popular offensive schemes you see online. For example, Gun Bunch. Everybody runs it. It does a great job against the meta. And I'm also going to show you guys how you can mix in a blitz from the same exact look to keep the offense on its heels. So make sure you guys watch the whole video so you don't miss anything. Now guys, if you can give me 300 likes on this video, I will also break down another defense you can mix in with this that's going to be absolutely hell to deal with for the offense so we're in the Giants playbook on defense and I'm going to be looking at the three through five wide and we're going to be talking about some match coverage I've spoken a lot about match coverage this year but in this video I'm going to be going over some new adjustments and some new things that really can make your match coverage even better against like I said the most common things people do online so offensively we're in the Jets book because I feel like the Jets book is so popular right now between bunch and bunch tight end you know, you just see so many people running the one-play touchdowns with Jets Dig, um, you know, Bench Pivot, Flood, Z-Spot. I mean, come on. Everybody knows these plays are so, 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 so common. So let's take a look at how we like to defend these plays from the 3 through 5 wide. Just a quick reminder, guys, if you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and turn your notifications on. We do tips and gameplays on a daily basis for Madden 21, and you're not going to want to miss out. Also, if you're looking to get better at Madden 21, you can check out sportsgamers.com. That's where I put all my premium content from ebooks, tips, offensive and defensive schemes, everything you guys need to get better at the game. So we're going to be looking, like I said, a cover for match from the 3 through 5 wide. Uh, the play is going to be called the cover for show 2. <clears throat> now, there's definitely some subs you can do. You definitely want to make sure that you have a good D-line. Um, if you have pass rushing abilities, that's key because most of the time we will be rushing three, although, like I said, I will mix in the blitz. Now, you can put, if you want, you can put a safety in a linebacker to user, um, only at the inside linebacker spot unless you audible down. But other than that, like definitely have your best linebackers in the game if you can't audible. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, as far as your coaching adjustments, I just like to have auto flip on and you want to have zone drops set to default because if you... Change them, it's going to basically cancel out the match coverage, which is what makes this defense so good and so difficult to deal with. If you've been watching my gameplays, you guys should know, 9 out of 10 players you know, that run this bunch, bunch tight end, you know, stuff that everybody uses online, have no idea how to beat this. I lock up everybody with this defense. It's crazy. So let's just start with one of the most common plays in the game, the Z-spot corner route. So we're going to move the ball back, give ourselves some room to work with, and get right to it. So... Most common setup to this is essentially you're going to just block the running back. You're going to have the smart routed corner out right in the slot. You're going to streak the tight end, have an out route, and then have a drag. And a lot of times people will put their lone bunch receiver as uh, a receiver that has playmakers so they can playmaker him. So what I'm going to do here is, is simple. First of all, I'm going to press coverage, spread my D-line out. All right, next thing I'm going to do, you can crash your D-line out. You don't have to, but very, 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 very important. Man up this linebacker on the tight end side that's blitzing to the linebacker. Now, because we have auto flip on, that linebacker is always going to be blitzing on the tight end side of the bunch. So we man him up. The reason why we man him up is when we man him up, it's going to, like, there's some different route combos that can exploit match coverage by default. But when you man up the tight end, a lot of them don't work anymore. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to put the safety on the bunch side of the field into a deep half. So that would be the right safety this time, and deep half is up on the left analog stick. Why do we do this? Well, there's some one-play touchdown setups that can confuse the, the deep zones if you don't do that on the bunch side of the field. Final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the safety that's on the left side, the lone receiver side, in an inside third. And why do we do that? Well, because then, again, if there's some setups that could go right down the pipe if we don't do that right down the seam, and we don't want that. So, you know, we're essentially just going to be using the middle of the field mostly. So let's just look at how this will work against, like I said, a very, very, very common set of people run. And I'm going to explain the coverage breakdown in the replay. But as you guys can see, there is nothing open whatsoever. This is going to be 
broken up, if not picked, every single time. So let me break down what just happened. So if you take a look at the replay, you're going to notice a few things. First of all, the quarter flat on the bunch side, it's essentially going to guard whoever hits the flat first. Um, same thing over here with this quarter flat. Like if the running back went into the flat, he would do the same thing. But since the running back doesn't go into the flat, he can kind of just drop back. He has really nothing to do. Now, this corner, he's going to take whoever goes deeper to the sideline, like the corner routes. This is why it's so good against corner routes is because he's going to guard whoever's going to the corner route. Is he completely locked up here? And there, there's just, you know, there's, there's no way you're going to be able to complete this. This is in double coverage. That's not a good read. All right. Then we have, let's just zoom out a little bit more so you can see. Obviously, the tight end manned up, so we don't have to worry about him. The deep zone over the top. The deep middle zone and then this guy over here he's matching as if he's in man coverage and the, the really nice thing about this is he actually presses um in his deep zone so it's really you know it's super effective then i can discard the middle of the field and look for playmakers and things like that now the reason why i like to man up the tight end like i said is it takes away some of the more popular route combos people do to exploit it also if someone has like a hot route master or a route cam on the tight end a lot of times they'll put him on a post or a crosser and like those will get open by default um, if you don't do that. Now, one thing I'll I will say, if you want to use abilities to make this defense the best it could be, I would actually probably recommend putting um, on that what, your outside linebacker like have some safe, be able to put a safety here like to audible down, so you could audible down from in the four six playbook nickel three five normal. In other playbooks, you could audible down from um, the you know the the odd the nickel odd formation. Um, that will only get you two safeties in the game, but still, it's better than just one. But anyways, put one step ahead on the linebacker, really, safety that you have manned up to the tight end. We'll notice a huge, huge difference on the coverage if you do that. Other than that, I do like to have some D-line abilities, either double or nothing, El Toros, and then Acrobats. That's what I use. All right. So, let's go ahead and look at some other examples. Let's now do Flood. Flood is extremely common play so this is actually a really good example of why manning up the tight end is important guys so let's take a look all right so flood people will just literally just run the stock now we're gonna go at silting let's press same thing press spread the d-line crash them out if you want man the tight end up deep half the safety on the bunt side inside third on the opposite side safety see how easy that was like i mean you you can't do much more easy of a setup. I mean, I can do that in my sleep. But anyways, let's just take a look at how this works. Um, you're going to be really responsible for watching, like I said, mostly the middle of the field when you're in this type of setup. As you guys can see here, bam, and we're locked up. Now, I want to show you guys why this is so important to man up the tight end, other, you know, other than obviously to cover the tight end if he's on like crossers and posts. But this is a great example of why that's important. So you guys can see here, Everything's covered. I mean, the out route's covered, the flat's covered, the bomb. And this, by the way, this is a bomb over the top. It's, it's covered because of the deep half. Then, obviously, we have, you know, we're working back to work on the in route ourselves. If they try to, like, low ball it, we're there. So, everything was covered. Now, guys, watch what happens if you don't man up the tight end. So, like, let's just say you do what a lot of people do, which is just basically put that guy in his zone, right? Watch what happens. So, instead of manning the tight end up, we're just putting him in his zone. Watch this. Now this out route is just naked on the sideline. And because that the reason for that is because we didn't man the tight end up, that corner flat that on the last example did guard the out route, he had to guard the tight end in the flat. So that's why that's so big uh, to make that little adjustment, to stop flood, posts, crossers, all that type of stuff. Very, very, very important. So you guys can see flood, very, very common play. We got it locked up. Okay, now what about... Uh, bench pivot. That is probably the most common play. Everybody runs this. It's just, you already know what it is. So bench pivot, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to spread our line. You can crash them out if you want. Don't have to, whatever. We're just not going to this time. Uh, man at the tight end. Deep half the safety on the bunch side. The opposite safety on the one receiver side. We do the inside third. Inside third is to the left on the left analog stick. And I mean, I do like to put my user on a blitz angle. Just because it gives me better user control. Do the snap. So, you know, this is, again, very common setup. Just do the streak, and then they're going to look to either hit the corner route or the in route. As you guys can see here, there is nothing open. 
I'm just basically lurking, lurking, lurking. There's nothing. So, if you take a look at the replay, you'll see what happened. Once again, look, I'm just taking away the middle of the field because, look, the flat's covered, tight end's covered. Now, he, he potentially could have got open here because, again, this is guy's not very... I mean, this is just a middle linebacker guarding him. But if you have a safety there, especially one step ahead, you know, it's not going to be, you know, get much separation like that. Um, I mean, that's decent separation right there. And then I'm just coming back to the middle of the field myself. Now, I do want to show you some examples of if they do have the running back going out, especially into the flat, because I do want to show you that that will get guarded by that quarter flat on the left side of the screen. So let's take a look. Um, Jet stick. So this is the one play touchdown a lot of people use uh, for, for cover three. It's not going to work against cover four. But here again, same thing. Um, so let's just go ahead. Same setup. Bam, 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 bam. So what a lot of people will do um, is they'll basically just, they'll either put this guy in a corner out or, you know, the, on, the thing is the flat just works itself. So let's just leave the flat, block the tight end. But watch, watch how the... The, the running back gets guarded out of the backfield. And watch that the bomb doesn't work either. See how the bomb doesn't work? You can just try to chuck that and you're just throwing it in triple coverage. Obviously, not a good read. But if you take a look at the replay, um, normally what would happen if that was a cover three is the corner on the right would come down and then because of the flat, which is crazy, but then they could bomb this over the top. Obviously, that didn't happen here. But the other thing I want you guys to notice is if the running back does go out of the backfield, He's going to get taken by that quarter flat. So then, I, you know, I'm just going to be sitting over in the middle field waiting for these types of middle routes, digs, whatever. Now, obviously, you know, if you don't have the best players as far as secondary type players or even the safeties at linebacker, sometimes routes over in the middle field can get open like posts, crossers, digs. And that's why I'm saying you have to have your user over the middle. So if you see someone got open... Just beat the match coverage, which, like I said, if you don't have the best secondary players, sometimes certain routes, like mostly digs and crosses and posts, might get open. You're going to be there to pick it up yourself. Now, I also want to show you guys how you can utilize this defense to get pressure, um, you know, just so they can't always assume you're just rushing three. So let's just go right back to the same play. Let's just do jet stick again. Let's just send everybody out. So say, you know, they're just assuming you're going to continuously just leave everybody in coverage, right? You're not going to blitz. So what you can do, just press, same thing, press, spread your line out, crash them out, blitz off your linebackers like this, and just stand right over this guy right here. Now, you can QB contain. Um, don't necessarily have to. QB contain is better, you know, as far as the funny rollouts. But what you're going to do is just stand over to the D tackle. So here's how it would look. Um, like I said, you can stand over to D tackle. You can stand over to guard. Just whatever you want to do. Bottom line is you just have to be aware that you're now blitzing that quarter flat on the left side of the screen. So if they do send the running back out, that's going to be your job to go get him. So like if I see that, bam, just go get him. And my guy got nano detected off the... I don't, under, like, I don't understand why all of a sudden EA wants to have people getting nano detected off the edge. I mean, it doesn't happen nonstop. But, like, in my games lately, I've been seeing it happen here and there once in a while, and it's just so annoying. But, again, let's just take a look at it. Bam. Get the sack. You know, if, it, if you see the guy hitting the flat, you know that you just need to hit the low lineman for a second and then jump out in the flat and guard, and I, guard him. I can't him. Um, I can't tell you how many pick sixes I've got doing that. It's like basically you just tap that old lineman for a split second so he thinks you're blitzing. Then you just jump off immediately, haul ass to the flat, I can't tell you how many pick sixes I've got people just chucking that because they don't want to get sacked. But it's a very nice mix-in, and the reason for that is if like they notice, like, oh, match, 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 rushing three, rushing three every play, they're probably going to start sending the running back out a decent amount, just trying to occupy you know all the defenders. And if you see them sending the running back out every play, just do this. And now they're not going to know, like, oh, sh is he going to blitz me? I might just need to block the running back every play. And when they do that, you can you know, you can just play coverage, and this guy right here that would have responsibility on the running back, he's just gonna, as you've seen in the examples, he's gonna play more over the middle of the field, kind of just like almost like he's in a hook zone, and give you more support against some of these other routes. Now the other thing is, even if they do block the running back to try to counter this five man rush, um, the sheds right now when you use this defense and rush five are actually unreal as long as you have a decent D line. Now if your D line is terrible. You're, you're not going to get as good of sheds. But if you have a good D-line, 
The sheds on that defense, um, where you rush five, are crazy. They don't really have that much time um, to make their reads. It's it's actually a very effective way to play defense. A lot of people are doing that right now with three El Toros, um, just rushing five. Because what happens is is the El Toros, they all at that point basically are, are usually singled up, and you know they will get some pressure pretty consistently rushing five. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This defense is so tough, like. Bunch users especially just cannot beat it, but you can apply these principles to defend lots of formations. Like, I use this against bunch tight end, bunch, um, I even use it against some spread. Uh, you know, it's just different adjustments for everything people do. Like I said, give me 300 likes on the video and we'll break down some more ways to utilize this 35 wide scheme that I've been making famous in my tips and gameplays. Hope you all enjoy it. It's Duke. I'm out of here.